everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Legal Bites newscast. I'm Alita, I'm a lawyer, and this channel is all about explaining the law one bite at a time. So today we're continuing our coverage of election law topics across the United States. We've done a couple videos in the election, including a deep dive into the election process overall, and we're doing our best to try to be as objective and unbiased as possible here. So if you've found that we've managed to do that in this video, please go ahead and give us a like. And if you wanna check out the other election videos that we've done so far, you can find the links to them in the description of the video below. And if you like seeing lawyers analyze legal issues in movies, TV shows, and games, go ahead and check out the rest of our channel. We've done videos on Jurassic Park, Back to the Future, and The Last of Us Part Two on PlayStation. Okay, so in this video, we're talking about Arizona. There are a few election lawsuits that were filed in Arizona, which had the possibility of tying up the certification of the state's vote. If you saw our last video on Georgia, you know that after election day, states typically go through a process called canvassing, where they tally the vote and make sure everything is accounted for. At the end of canvassing, the counties certify, and then the state certifies. If the state has a procedure for a recount, it usually happens after certification. If they have a procedure for an audit, that usually happens somewhere during or around the canvassing stage. In Arizona, the state conducts an audit of the voting systems after election day and before official canvassing begins. And so turning back to the lawsuits filed in Arizona, it looks like the final two were just dismissed last week. The first of those two was a lawsuit filed by the Arizona Republican Party, which tried to get a new audit completed in Maricopa County, Arizona's most populous county, and one that actually went for Joe Biden. The reason they said they wanted an audit was because of a change that was made in the state to the organization of voting precincts in the lead up to the election, thanks to the concerns about COVID-19. As a result of the reorganization, 748 precincts were collected into 175 vote centers. So what the Republican Party was arguing was that the audit procedure also should have changed. Normally, the audit tests a sample of ballots from 2% of polling places. But because the number of polling places was drastically reduced by gathering together these different precincts into voting centers in an election that actually saw record numbers of voters, the Republican Party argued that the audit should be redone, this time sampling 2% of precincts rather than 2% of polling places. At the time of recording this video, the judge hasn't yet issued a detailed written order explaining the reasoning for the dismissal, but we can kind of guess what some of the reasons might be based on what happened in the last hearing in the case. At that hearing, Maricopa County Superior Court Judge John Hanna pointed out the fact that the Arizona Republican Party had an opportunity to challenge the audit rules before the election, but failed to do so. Given the fact that the Republican Party even had a representative involved in the audit process more than two weeks before election day, the fact that the Republican Party waited until after the results of the election were announced was highly suspect. So the legal concept the court seems to be hinting at here is the doctrine of latches. Latches basically means when a plaintiff has known or has reason to know of a potential claim, but just waited too long to bring it. It's kind of similar to a statute of limitations if you've heard of that concept, but it's slightly different. Usually in a case involving latches, the plaintiff has just waited long enough that he or she has created a massive burden on the defendant that could have been avoided effectively if the plaintiff had just filed earlier. For example, think of a case where one person brings a nuisance claim against their neighbor because they decided to put a theme park in their backyard. Well, if it turns out that the plaintiff actually knew ahead of time that the neighbor had plans to put a theme park in his or her backyard and didn't say anything about it, didn't try to file earlier in order to prevent it from happening in the first place, now that plaintiff has waited until the defendant has already put a ton of resources and time and money into putting that together. So it's gonna cost even more for the defendant to take that theme park out rather than to have prevented him from putting it in in the first place, if that makes sense. So in this case, based on how the hearing went, if I had to guess, the dismissal was probably for some reason along the line of latches, because if the Arizona Republican Party had filed a complaint earlier, they could have prevented the supposedly faulty audit in the first place, and it could have resulted in an election process that's way less chaotic, that's way less likely to result in delays, etc. And by the way, the judge dismissed the lawsuit without leave to amend. That means that he's not giving the Arizona Republican Party the ability to make changes to their petition and to refile. So in other words, unless they decide to appeal the case, this lawsuit is donezo. Okay, so the other lawsuit that was dismissed last week is a bit simpler to explain. It was brought by two voters named Lori Aguilera and Donovan Drobina before Maricopa County Judge Margaret Mahoney. Although each of their situations are slightly different, 
Both plaintiffs alleged that their ballots were mishandled by the voting machines. And like the Republican Party's case, the dismissal in this case also has few details, although Judge Mahoney said that a more detailed written order would follow soon. But basically what is known is that in ruling on the issue, Judge Mahoney said that the case would not have altered the outcome of the election because an issue was just two ballots, and the margin between the two candidates in Arizona is around 11,000. This is somewhat similar to the Trump lawsuit in Arizona that the Trump campaign ended up withdrawing. In that case, the Trump campaign alleged that a number of votes were wrongly thrown out as overvotes. An overvote is basically when a voter votes for two people in a single race. When a machine detects an overvote, it marks it as spoiled and throws it out. However, the problem for the Trump campaign was the precise number of overvotes that were supposedly wrongly detected. Initially, it sounded like thousands of votes have been flagged as overvotes. But as the litigation continued, the total votes at issue ended up being more like 181. Because those 181 votes weren't enough to make a difference in the 11,000 vote margin between Trump and Biden, the Trump campaign ended up withdrawing the lawsuit. So a concept to note here about the last two lawsuits is mootness. Most people probably have an idea of what it means for an argument to be moot. This is all a moot point. <laughs> huh. A moo point? <laughs> yeah. It's like a cow's opinion. <laughs> you know, it just doesn't matter. <laughs> it's moo. Have I been living with him for too long or did that all just make sense? <laughs> But if you're Joey from Friends, mootness basically means that regardless of whether the plaintiff in the lawsuit wins, it's impossible for them to get a remedy. Mootness comes from Article 3 of the US Constitution, specifically a portion of it called the Case or Controversy Clause. The Case or Controversy Clause basically says that a court can only hear a case if there's still an actual controversy between the parties. In other words, it has to be the case that a ruling by the judge would have some possible actual impact on the parties. For example, take a conservatorship case where two sisters are fighting over who's going to take care of their elderly father when he's in a nursing home. If the father dies during the dispute, the case becomes moot because there's no longer any father to take care of. So there are a few exceptions to mootness, and the biggest one is reserved for cases that are described as capable of repetition yet evading review. Cases that fall into this category have two requirements. First, the underlying issue has to be the kind of thing that's too short to be fully litigated before the controversy somehow disappears. And second, there has to be a reasonable expectation that the same complaining party would be subjected to the same situation again. Basically, the exception allows for a judge to say, okay, normally this case would be moot, but because the issue is likely to come up again, let's proceed with the case anyway. This exception is usually found in cases that involve elections, pregnancies, short sentences in criminal cases, etc. However, in order for the exception to mootness to apply, there has to be a possibility that a ruling in the case will have some kind of practical effect. So even though these two vote tallying cases are election lawsuits and broadly fit into the general type of case that could fall under the exception to mootness, these cases ultimately don't fit that exception. And bear with me here. The reason they don't is because the point they're going for is to argue that there are a certain number of ballots that weren't counted but should have been, so your honor would like you to order them to count these ballots with the rest. In other words, they're not claiming that any laws or policies are unconstitutional or otherwise unlawful. These lawsuits don't go to a broader law that they say should be struck down. What they're alleging and what they're asking for only can possibly impact this election not future elections. And to really drive it home, you can look at it like this. Even if they have a perfect case with the best evidence in the world to prove their case, there's no way that their success in the case would end up having any practical effect on anything. And that's because a 100% win still only impacts a number of votes that is less than the margin between Trump and Biden. So basically, the issue is moot. So with that, it looks like there are no more lawsuits contesting the results of the election in Arizona, and it's set to certify Joe Biden as the winner of the electoral votes in that state. I'll get into Donald Trump's final opportunity to fight in Arizona, but first, this video is sponsored by Andy the Game Maker. Their debut game, Crypto Cartel, a card game, is a ton of fun. It's a resource development game set in the dark, less than legal world of the international black market funded by cryptocurrency. A link to the game is in the description below, and if you want free shipping, use the promo code LEGAL. Okay, back to the video. So now that these lawsuits have all been either withdrawn or dismissed, the only potential avenue Donald Trump could have to win Arizona is with a recount. 
However, that also doesn't look good for the Trump campaign. Under Arizona law, a recount can't be requested by anyone. The only way for a recount to occur is if it's automatically triggered by a small margin between the two candidates, like a really small margin. In an election involving over 25,000 ballots, like this election, the recount is only triggered if the margin is 0.1% of the overall votes or 200 votes, whichever number is smaller. And in this case, the margin is way bigger than that, about 11,000 votes or 0.3% of the overall vote in Arizona. So it looks like Donald Trump isn't going to get a recount here. And with that, it looks fairly certain that Joe Biden will solidly get those electoral votes from Arizona. So that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. And if you did, we'd really appreciate you hitting the like button. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell to our channel so you can follow along with our future videos. Thanks.